Hey, super sweet strangers. Welcome to another episode of The Strange Sessions. As always, I'm Kurt, and I am joined by my lovely co-host, Krista, and I don't really have anything funny to say today because we are both... We're just brain dead. We're in a mood. We're both I, in a mood today, and it's... This is going to be a very interesting it's episode. It's going to be a very interesting episode. <laughs> I'm forgetting something we just talked about like two minutes ago. Yeah, So I and I'm <sighs> feeling weird today. I felt weird yesterday. I've had a really bad headache. Me so, too. Yeah, so something in the water. We're not 100% today, so <laughs> forgive us. It'll probably be really entertaining. Oh, probably. And my topic's somewhat confusing, so this People should seem be interesting. People very, very uh, entertained by the you and I getting a little tipsy after sharing yeah, that our was one funny. beer. That was pretty funny. But hey, that's just us. That's how yep. we roll. I uh, well, would like to give shout outs to our newest strangers, and those are Shannon Thomason, Christina Barrett-Hatch, and John Seek. Only three? We had one last night, and I did not get a chance to write it down yet, oh, so that will okay. be in the next episode. But yeah, oh. only three, but the last time we went like three months without it. true. It. <laughs> so yeah. do we okay. have any housekeeping? I don't think so. For no. once, I don't think so. We've been contacted by a couple other podcasts that would like to have us on the show or come on our show. So that's something we're kind of looking into. Mm-hmm. We've gotten a lot of emails. We've gotten a lot of emails too. lately. Yeah. Uh, I just totally blanked <laughs> on what I was going to say. <laughs> Thank God I have my stuff written down and you do too. Otherwise, we'd just sit here and go, oh. Yeah. There's, there's other people here. We would just pay them to come in and read whatever we wrote down. Right. They could just do the show. Probably do a better job than I will. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> I'm just trying to think. Like I feel like there's something I was just gonna say, and I'm completely blanking on it. Hmm. Do you have a song picked up? I do. Later? Okay, good. I do. Thank I actually you. listened to it a bunch of times on the way here. Oh, nice. Because I love the song. People seem to like my Hey Ya, my acoustic version yeah, of Hey Ya. Cool. Yours was funky. I yeah. liked yours. I love those guys. Um, what were we gonna talk about? All the stuff we have to open, maybe. Yeah, we have like we have three packages here to open, and we still have three more packages at home yet. We wouldn't normally do it, but I'm worried that things might expire. Yeah. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open uh, April's. I believe we know is a food thing that she, I think she was worried about it okay. expiring, and we have two more: one from Josh. And oh, so one... she maybe sent this back in March or something. Yeah. Oh. One from Josh and one from Lauren that okay. we don't know if they're food or not. So if they look foodie, <laughs> we're not gonna say what it is, yeah, and we we'll will save it, it for. Her. But we just want to kind of get this stuff opened to see what it is. Are you? trustable to open a package today because you even have trouble opening a package on a day where you're you're at 100 percent might accidentally slice myself open i'll (laughs) give it a shot i'll give it a shot oh this is like a box box box. wow it's already got a hole in it i could probably just rip yeah it it got a hole in it when it came in the mail (laughs) oh that's a lot of stuff in here okay i gotta move my microphone away oh let's see i'll use keys I had my little multi-tool with that handy-dandy package opener, and I don't know where that multi-tool went. I think I lost it. Oh, you cannot go wrong with popcorn. No, you can't. I bet you it's, I bet you pickle flavored or some weird flavor. Exactly what I was gonna say. I'd be okay with pickle flavored popcorn. This is so hard to open. There we go. There's like a lot of stuff in here. Just grab one. Curdy Kurt and Clever Krista. That's cute. Oh, there's a whole bunch of stuff in here. What? Just grab one and we'll save the rest. Don't look at everything. But Just I like grab to. grab the biggest one. Right. Okay. This. There's so many cool things in here. Oh my god. The card says Krista and Kurt. Thanks for making such an awesome podcast. You're Thank welcome. you. We have <laughs> such a great group of strangers who are not strangers at all, which is true. I hope you both enjoy the box of goodies. I try to include some southern foods, but most of our foods have to be cooked or fried. So no shipping. Just means you'll have to take a road trip. Love, April. That would be really fun. Thank actually. you so much, I want April. I take a picture of the card. Thank you so much, April. Oh, it's got two pupper dogs on it. Puppers. Two baby floofers, as I like to call them. Cute. Should we so, open the other two packages and just not say what's in them? And then figure out what we want to eat out of this. I said made in Alabama. Made in Alabama. Is that the card? That's her. Oh, she was made in Alabama? I think so. Okay. Um, okay. Hold on. So, 
Yeah, but wait, we got, shouldn't we open these and yeah, see what okay. these are? Yeah, that's true. Okay, so I grabbed this, and maybe we'll if the, one of these doesn't expire first. This one is from Josh, I believe, right? Okay. Yes. Josh. So much tape. <laughs> now somebody's going to send us one that's like completely a whole roll of duct tape wrapped around it. <laughs> have a compilation of me struggling to open <laughs> that'll be bonus oh my god this is not a taste test so we'll leave it right or sh- no should we talk about it yeah okay hold on there's a card another card hello from the buckeye state Woohoo. this is awesome Sorry. <laughs> freaking out i love our listeners <laughs> I, I do too to say that <laughs> Greetings. I stayed at Salt Fork State Park recently. This is an area rife with Bigfoot lore. I had to get you guys something say strange. Here, let me take a picture of the letter. I'm ho- I'm keeping Kurt in suspense. She is. I I'm getting a little what's salty about that. Hmm. Oh, and she didn't care. No. Nope. Kurt likes to be in control. Psh. Okay. I kind of do. Are you ready? Yeah, you do. <laughs> what do you mean, yeah, you do? Do I really? Oh. <laughs> Oh, those are so cute. Bigfoot socks. Those are awesome. Oh, my God. <laughs> this is amazing. Those are, uh, that's going to go with my podcasting underwear. Sweet. Now I'm going to have podcasting socks as well. Those oh are awesome. Oh, my God. These are amazing. Which one do you want? Whichever one you don't want. Well, green's my favorite I'll let you color. be in control this time. <gasps> what? I'm going to take the green ones okay. then because, oh, my God, these are amazing. These are awesome. Oh, Thank you on. so much, Josh. I feel so spoiled. I love that he's fishing in mine. <laughs> no, mine's wearing like Captain America socks. <laughs> <laughs> Thank These you are... so much, oh Josh. Oh my God, I'm dying right now. Yep. No, That's got... amazing. That is. Thank you so much. Oh, wait, wait, wait. There's a sticker in here. Ooh, stickers. We like stickers. It says Salt Fork State Park, always searching for Bigfoot. That's that is awesome. really cool. That is really cool. <sighs> I'm just like, I don't know. I feel so spoiled. Thank you so I can't much. Believe people send us stuff. I know. It's so crazy. <laughs> no. And then we give them a subpar podcast in exchange. <laughs> okay. Do we have one more thing to sure. open? Okay. This is from Lauren. Thank you, Josh. Yes, I mean, thank you, Josh. Seriously. I love this. And this is from Lauren. Do you think I re- am I do I really have control issues? <laughs> <laughs> it's really gonna bother Kurt. It is gonna bother me. When it comes to the podcast, you do. Kind of. A good example would be we'll get to that later. <laughs> That's not being in control. That's just all right. I have. Yeah, I just gave Kurt a look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a look. I'm okay with it. She likes being dominated. I do. Oh boy. Oh god. People are gonna run with that now. I'm gonna end up getting handcuffs in the mail or something. <laughs> Settle down, people. I can't get this one. Off. <laughs> uh, packages are my kryptonite, apparently. They are. Do you want? I do have a multi tool, yeah, but it doesn't have the good handy dandy. This isn't happening. I'm afraid of like cutting through something. But I know that's one of the problems I have with. I think if I get it in here, though, we should probably just have a pair of scissors here. Not a bad idea. <laughs> It'll be by season six. We actually managed to get a pair of scissors here. When she gives it back to me, baby point knife side. Back, yeah. <laughs> My dangerous baby. Okay, oh. We have a whoop, whoop, whoop. There's stuff falling everywhere. Okay. I think that's the two little sheets are explaining what's Ooh. in here. So I don't think these will expire though. Oh wow. I don't think they're gonna expire either. Kurt and Krista, hello. My name is Lauren and my sister Danielle, she's the one who sent you the pickle beer, introduced me to your podcast back in December and it is now one of my favorites. I love listening to the both of you. Thank you. I know you both like to drink these apple cider vinegar drinks, so I decided to send you some balsamic vinegar to try from the place I work. It's called the Stanton Olive Oil Company, and it's located in Stanton, Virginia. The store carries a large variety of vinegar, so I sent blueberry for Kurt and maple for Krista. Yum. Of course, you can share. (laughs) I also sent spoons for tasting. Thank you so much for a great podcast. I can't wait to hear your Haunted Virginia episode. I can't remember what you actually call them at the top of my head. Strange States, maybe? Yes. Enjoy and stay strange. Lauren, stay strange. <laughs> stay strange, Lauren. Okay. Stay strange. Stay strange. <laughs> we are going to struggle with that. Yeah, today, we are going to struggle with that. Thank so, you. Do, so what do you want to do? Let's, let's, don't do this now. Let's okay. do it the next, next episode? episode. Okay. And then these Because have... this isn't going to go bad. 
These have three Best Buy dates on them, which is hilarious to me, depending on what country you're in. Oh. We'll, we'll talk about that. In okay. Second. Okay. <laughs> but so yeah, because we know hers aren't going to go bad. No. So let's save that. We need to organize before we I'm go. excited. I love yeah. blueberry. I love balsamic vinegar. I do too. It's so good. Okay. I'm excited. Wow. Thank, thank you. You are amazing. Thank you, Josh. Thank you, <sighs> Lauren. And thank you, April. Okay. So we sh- should we talk about April? Yes. That's, that's what, what we're, we're going to have. I don't e- still don't even know what it is. So there was a box of goodies that I'm really excited about. And I believe these are potato chips. It says product of Spain. It's Quillo. That must be the brand. Huevo Frito, which I know Frito is potato chip, maybe. And it's fried egg flavor. Oh. Yeah. I'm Yum. excited about this. So this is funny. It says... I don't have glasses on. One of these countries' best before date is 1230 of 2020. USA best before date is 312 2020. And in Asia, the best before date is 312 2020. So why why is one date December? I don't know. That's really weird. It is. I still think it's the potato chips. I, so this, apparently these were best by a couple months ago. Oh, but big deal. It's, I, yeah, it's a chip. Care. It's not going to be bad. I hope not. Is it a potato chip? It is. Just looks like regular potato chips. I what does it smell like? Chip. Nothing. It just smells like a potato chip. It doesn't smell like a fried egg. Oh, it smells like cruncher. It smells like... Those really crunchy potato chips? It smells good. Yeah. I'm going to take a picture of this. Man, if I would have known these were sitting in my living room for this long, <laughs> I would have busted these open and ate them. All right, I'm going to grab a couple. I wonder if they're egg flavored or if they're like made with eggs. It says fried egg flavor. Okay. Very curious. Me too. Oh, I, I got a kind of a whiff now that air in my hand. It smells like farty. <laughs> oh, now that you say that, maybe I'm just highly suggestible, but okay. Are you ready? <laughs> I don't know if I've ever You're used farty. Like I don't know if I've ever used farty as a descriptive word before. Ready? Let's do it. Mmm. They totally taste like a fried egg. They're really good, but they—they wow. they do totally taste like a fried egg. Like the second I put it in my mouth, yeah. I tasted fried egg. Yep. Wow. Oh my god, I really like these. Mhm. Mm. These would be really good with like an egg salad sandwich. The egg flavoring is more subtle than I mm-hmm. expected. Mhm. That's probably good though. Yeah. Okay, one more. I really like these. Mm. Wow. Mm-hmm. Those are really good. Mm. Wow. That is a potato chip flavor I never thought I would taste. No. Hmm. Fried egg. I really like these. Like a Did lot. Did we rate our taste test last time? No. We totally forgot. I, wow. I we're out of that. it. I realized that when I was editing. <laughs> okay. You want to I could have just these? edited in like at my place and I could have done Krista's. I could have done a high voice. <laughs> I don't have a really high no, voice though. No, you don't really though. have a high voice. That's funny. Mmm. Wow, that's different. Yeah, those are really good. <laughs> what are you? I wish I had a baggie to bring them home for Jim. I want you to take them. No, I want you to take them. Are you sure? Yeah, because Jim can try them. We're probably going to be snacking on them during the episode anyway. That's true. I, those are really good. I'm giving them? them a 10 because... I'm going to give them a 9. I love potato chips. I do too. It's a weakness. Yeah. And any kind of different flavor of potato chip, I love to try. I'm going to give and them... I love a, eggs. I do too. Oh, I've been on a big egg kick. Are you? I buy those... Uh, I've been eating just a ton of these as a snack. It's the the just crack an egg. It comes in a little tiny, like a little container, and you open it up, and it's got like a little bag of diced vegetables. Oh, a little and you put it in the of, microwave. Yeah, and then you mix in it, crack an egg, mix it in there, mix it up, put it in your microwave, and it makes a little scramble mm. that has like ham pieces, pieces of green pepper, and it's they're so good. Oh, that so I've been good. eating. I've been trying to eat better, so I've been eating that. Oh, good for you. But I'm going to give it a 9 because I think it could be a little eggier. And I gave it a 10 because I think it was just eggy enough. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wanted a little more egg flavor, okay. but I love mm, these. Fair. I really, yeah, really, they're really, really like good. these. That was I didn't even know those existed. So no. very awesome. How, and there's do other... get, how do you get the flavor of fried egg into a potato know. chip? I don't know I don't know. Either. And there's other goodies in her box she sent? Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much, April. Yeah, thank you. I'm That's amazing. One. We got to take pictures of these addresses. Yes. So we can send cards. Yeah. I'm going to mm. do that right now. Okay. Are you going first or am I going You're first? You're going first. You always make me go first. Krista just told me yeah. off, off record that she's afraid hers is going to suck. Yeah. So 
I it's, literally it's a oh, weird I t- <laughs> a potato chip on my <laughs> microphone. Okay. <laughs> it's a, it's just like a topic that is not a lot of information out there. I have no idea what yours is. Okay. It's a, a picture of the of a, like a map. A map of the Walmart parking lot. Yeah. An aerial view. Okay. Should we just get into it? Are we forgetting anything? We're good. We did our uh, taste test. We did housekeeping. Uh, my favorite mini mystery, shout outs, housekeeping, taste test, main story. Oh, you have an agenda. I always have an agenda. I like it. Oh, mm-hmm. You know me. <laughs> Control free Kurt. <laughs> <laughs> You're funny. You don't like surprises. You don't like anything out of your routine. I, I, I'm, I'm, one, I'm I was, kind of the same way too. Like I'm 100% I don't... giving you crap because I realize that I do have control issues a lot. <laughs> I do too because I don't like things that are out of my control. But I, I don't think I'm a control freak. But I just don't like the unexpected. And I don't like things out of my routine either. I'm a little more flexible than you are. Yeah, I'm not very flexible. No, <laughs> you're not. <laughs> one of the things i love about you Karen. thank you <laughs> you're very consistent <laughs> oh yeah okay are you ready i am 100 <sighs> percent yours okay wow <laughs> all right then okay my mini mystery is about the armageddon time arc i have no idea what that is that sounds like an episode you're not of, gonna have much of an sounds idea like an episode of doctor who you're not <laughs> you're not gonna have much of an idea when i'm done either oh uh, okay so we have a new listener who started following us on Instagram. His name is Jordan. Hey, Jordan. What's hey, up? Hey, Jordan. He's also a stranger, too, Sweet. recently. Uh, and he gave me the idea for this mini mystery. This is the message she sent me on Instagram. New oh, listener Jordan's, here. It's a she, Jordan. No, he. It's a he, Jordan. He. Yep. He said, hello, I recently came across y'all's podcast and have really enjoyed it. You have a good thing going, and I look forward to few future episodes. Keep up the good work. Thanks, Jordan. Yes, thank you, Jordan. I also have an interesting subject if you want to look into it. There isn't enough information for an episode or even that much research since there is so little on the internet regarding it. But nonetheless, I've been super interested in it for some time. So that's why I thought it'd be good for a mini-mystery. But see, these are the things that I like. These are the things that I kind of like. Yeah. You know. So there is a private slash secretive cult slash group slash society question mark. Not sure what they are. That lives in an overgrown property in the middle of my city. They call it the ATA base or the Armageddon time arc. The property has been there for some time and the city has developed around it. It now sits at the far edge of a Walmart parking lot next to a gas station and a pizza hut. It's completely fenced in with multiple no trespassing signs posted around it. It's a rather large property, maybe three quarters of an acre and is engulfed in trees and plants. From what I've been able to find online, a man named No Drog founded it sometime in the 70s. What? No, is it Noah? No Drog. N O D R O G. Wow. No Drog. We'll okay. get to that. That sounds like a monster in a Final Fantasy video game. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, the final boss at the end of a video game. <laughs> Um, at one point, it was raided by the FBI, and a significant amount of firearms were confiscated. Confiscated? Confiscated. I can't talk. Words are hard, Kurt. <laughs> they are. As a result, the group planted a car bomb on a city official's oh, car, God. and since then, they've pretty much been left alone. <laughs> wow. Uh, people in my city just seem to ignore it and let them carry on in privacy. It's always captivated my attention, and I have always been so curious about what is happening behind those fences. So Jordan says he's a new listener, but obviously he's been listening long enough to know that I don't like to work or do research because he basically sent me all the information oh, that sweet. I could ever need on this. So, thanks, Jordan. <laughs> so I want to talk about their website for a little bit. It's kind of bonkers. I wasn't able to pull a lot of information from it because it says a lot of stuff, but doesn't really say anything See, specific. I love this because I have never heard about this, but this sounds like <sighs> something that is right up my alley. Oh, it's so weird. It's all over the place. There's a lot of what I would call kind of like propaganda, but no actual information, Uh if that makes sense. No, that makes total sense. So if you go to their website, it's atabase.info, which is not a secure website. Your browser is going to tell you that right away. You'll notice they use really large font and seemingly random words are capitalized or in all caps. Though they actually reference this in like a disclaimer at the bottom of the page that says, quote, all T's are capitalized in words on this site to emphasize the word time. Okay. We should probably be nice to them lest we get car bombs yeah, on maybe. our car. So I love They're these guys. I love these guys. They're in Texas, so we don't have to worry about it. However, there are a ton of words that don't begin with the letter T that are capitalized and also in all caps. 
So the header at the top of the homepage says the Armageddon Time Arc Base Operation, Ultimate Positive Survival Knowledge, exclamation point. It goes on to talk about major questions and minor questions. So here are the major questions they're asking. Where did we come from? Why are we here? Where do we go from here? Seems pretty logical, right? Yeah, I think about that a lot. Even the minor questions, I'm kind of like, yeah, yeah, I'm with you. So the minor questions, why are we living in such a wretched mess mess of society and civilization with nation against nation, tribe against tribe, religion against religion? Can't say I disagree. Uh, right. Why do we have constant wars, diseases, sickness, crime, and murder? Why do we have economic pressures, expenses beyond reason, and taxes that drain productivity and life itself? Why do we live in a world wherein, for the most part, governments work against freedom and make bond slaves? Religions destroy faith, banks destroy the economy, universities limit knowledge, doctors destroy health, and courts and lawyers pervert justice. I'm not saying they're wrong. I'm on board with it. Right? <laughs> Kurt's I'm, like, I'm, sign me up. Yeah, I'm kind of on board with this. <laughs> These are not questions that you must, quote, just live with. Answers do exist. And there's a, the answers do exist is a link that you can click on. Disclaimer, there's no answers. Did you look? Did you click? <laughs> I, oh, I clicked. We'll get to that link in a little bit. Okay. Smack dab in the middle of the page, there's a heading called, Your Time Arc Service Modules Have Returned. <laughs> and below that are three drawings. One is Noah's Ark. One is the Time Arc, which is a flying saucer. And then the Ark of the Covenant, which allegedly holds the stone tablets that the Ten Commandments were recorded on. Nobody like, can really establish like if they're real or not. Or looking demons that fly out and melt Nazis' faces. If sure. you want to go back to Raiders of the Lost Ark. Oh, right. <laughs> they do have some of... So they have this, you know, flying saucer here. And then on a different page... There's sort of like a weird disclaimer. The time and the Armageddon time arc base operation, the earth based part of the the earth based part <laughs> of the ODF, which is other outer dimensional forces. That's what that stands for is not in all caps, a quote UFO believing doomsday cult. But there's a picture of a UFO on their page and the name of the group has the word Armageddon in it. Just saying. Yeah. The ODF's actions are based on knowledge from his, capitalized, measures, and perfect facts, not mere belief. The ODF established that the ATA base operation as an end time base for the command arc <laughs> and as a nexus for actions in point number one of Armageddon. It reads like some weird instruction manual that you have no idea what they're referring no. to. Its main purpose being the dissemination of positive birthright and end-time positive survival knowledge for the people of Manessa Complex, which is the North American continent, apparently. We are at the end of an age and at the end of man's free moral agency for the millennium. Wow. This is a time when divine intervention will affect human civiliz civilizations on a massive scale. Wow. <sighs> Wrap your head around that. Yeah. <laughs> Like, what are they talking about? This they didn't almost really sounds, actually say anything. No, this sounds like it could get kind of like Xenu-ish, like from Scientology, the whole Xenu thing. Yeah, maybe a little bit. Yeah. Okay, so back to the homepage. Below the major minor question sections are additional links. They, they say, you are not meant to be here without answers. You are not meant to be here without understanding what is going on. And if you click on either one of those, it takes you to the same place that the answers do exist link is. And these... The page is basically the His Holy Measures page. <sighs> and I, I'll read through most of this. Does it, is it going to make as much sense as what you've yep, read so 100%. far? Yep, <laughs> 100%. <laughs> so there's like these bullet points, and they all start with His Holy Measures. So the first one is, His Holy Measures supersede any and all past and or present man-made history books, guidebooks, tablets, stones, scrolls, etc. Who is him? I don't know. Okay. Yahweh. They talk about Yahweh later. Okay. Plus any and all mediums, psychics, necromancers, prognosticators, soothsayers, channelers, and any other modern day golden <laughs> calf worshipers. <laughs> I know. All remaining <laughs> records of positive knowledge and fractionated history made by man throughout the ages have their beginnings in the measures. Again, no information being given to us here. His holy measures are our creator's service and operator's manual for human beings during our sojourn, sojourn time, during our sojourn on time station earth. We're on time station earth, <laughs> by the way. 
It's good to know. His holy measures contain all perfect knowledge and universal law guiding and governing mankind's entire existence on earth from the day of creation to the end of our time on this planet. His holy measures contain all perfect knowledge to enable mankind to live in heaven on earth. This is, it just gets weirder and weirder. Do you want me to keep reading this? Gu- guidance from his holy measures removes the mystery from our history and abolishes costly time consuming th- now it starts to read like an infomercial costly and time consuming experimental research for perfection when our creator materialized time station earth along with its life support time arc service modules remember the ufo and human patterns he also included a complete set of measures for human behavior and caretaking of the time station These guidelines and universal laws are part of our positive birthright. The Cosmic Core of Engineers (laughs) at ATA Base has an exclusive access to these holy measures at this time by absolute right of positive time function by basing the command arc here at 7 a.m. on September 3rd, 1963. Exactly three years later, time station Earth and its inhabitants entered the cosmic time period of point number one of Armageddon. Oh, wow. Back in 1963? Yeah. So it, it goes on and on with dates and timelines and references to positive birthrights and a cleansing that is going to take place when, quote, your time arcs, in parentheses, Yahweh's army, activate the sixth seal. Oh, boy. More sixth <laughs> seal, talk. In parentheses, partially described in Revelation, the book of Revelation, chapter 6, verses 12 through 17. You must be in a safe place during this cleansing in order to avoid being recycled along with the debris. So apparently if we're not in the right place at the right time, we're going to be space junk. (laughs) Like that's what I get from that. Um, The first step you must take towards surviving the due activation of seal number six and enjoying heaven on time station earth is to shift the fulcrum of your intellect so to as... So as to embrace the full five-dimensional technology that your creator allotted you. So there's five ben- positive benefits of five-dimensional technology. Tap the five-dimensional time bake for free, unlimited energy, without cost, taxes, or pollution. Construct and install the national total energy grid. And it just goes on about, like, apparently you can get free electricity without having to pay for anything. This is what I'm but getting That's almost like Tesla stuff because a that's what bit. Tesla wanted was that yeah. he thought that there was a way that we could get, that there could be unlimited electricity that you could beam to people's houses and stuff oh, right. like that. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah. This is probably one of my favorite. Build transportation vehicles with 1,000-year built-in durability. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they've never seen my car, apparently, <laughs> that falls apart every couple of weeks. Using monadic gravity these vehicles are crash proof and gather their own unlimited pollution free energy via compact transversiver units these are the real quote flying cars of the future the family model <laughs> seats 12 plus luggage with speeds up to fifty thousand miles per hour wow these vehicles are part of your positive birthright every family unit under the positive functional odf government will have one of their own for personal transportation for a heaven on earth <laughs> there's so much more craziness here <laughs> remove the cause of all man-made diseases enjoy an end to all wars and 99.9 percent of all crime so one percent still going to be here yeah that's, uh, that's... after are you talking like after the uh i don't know <laughs> after the apocalypse i have no idea <laughs> because they said that if you're not in the right place at the right time during the Yahweh's army coming. You're going to be space so debris. So I'm assuming that there's going to be a percentage of them that are Left. in the right place. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's a disclaimer at the bottom. All benefits of 5D technology are controlled under universal law and are not offered, nor represented here to be specifically nor generally available during point number one of Armageddon. So you should know that. It's mm-hmm. not available right now. It is not available right now. And there's even like this logo they have at the bottom. 13th Division Cosmic Corps of Engineers. Like it's a thing. Wow. That's very Illuminati. It is. With there's the a eye, pyramid the with an eye. Pyramid. Yeah. There's a whole page dedicated to outer dimensional forces, which are forces under the direct command of our true positive savior, Yeshua Hamashiach who is under the direct command of our father creator, the great Yahweh. It feels like this is like their 
Jesus. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so I feel like I could just read their entire website and it would be endlessly entertaining. But I wanted to touch on a couple of the articles Jordan forwarded to me as well. And they're mostly when about... I, <laughs> when I title this or put the description of this episode, I am not going to name them. Because right, because they we might need Google is it. somebody Googling it that coming <laughs> up and then car bombs galore for you and me. I, you know, and we'll get to that. Okay. <laughs> oh, now she's pulling a Kurt. We'll get to that. <laughs> we'll get to that, Wow. Kurt. No, I, I was going to say something, but then I'm like, no, we'll get to that later. I was, I was, we'll get to that later in myself. Okay. So one of the, Lateringing. one of the, <laughs> the articles he forwarded to me is roswellbooks.com under their Texas UFO Museum and Research Library has an article, article titled, quote, Texas UFO Cults, West Laco, Texas. And that's where this is taking place. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. West Laco. We have a, quite a few Texas listeners. Uh-huh. We do. It's a big state. The Outer Dimensional Forces, 1966 to the present. But I didn't see a date attached to this article, so I don't really know what quote the present is. It could have been 10 years ago. Before I forget, I just want to say doomsday cults are especially weird to me lately with that whole story about that Lori Vallow or whatever her name was that her kids were missing. Oh, was she part of a cult? Yeah, she was. They're like she in was some, in like Arizona or yeah, Idaho. They're in or some s- doomsday cult. Her and oh. the guy she's with. I can't remember. If that's whatever her happened husband. to the kids though? They found them buried in the guy's yard. Oh, they found I never the kids' heard the remains. End of that. Yeah, they found the kids' remains buried in the guy's yard. Oh, that's messed up. And there was all stuff, but the uh, the, the religious group that she's with has basically denied that they're a cult and we should do an episode on that uh, that's just i don't know it's the, the thing with the kids yeah that's tough you know that's that's i was really Maybe on the cult i was in following that pretty good and i was really hoping that because she kept saying the kids were safe the kids were safe so i was hoping that they were with family but no they found the remains on her boyfriend or husband. i knew there was something shady going on just yeah. because she didn't seem to care at all that her kids no had been because she said and... that she was uh given a task by God to prepare because apparently God is coming back in July, hmm. which the way this year is going, hey, <laughs> <laughs> who knows? wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, so that's just, this is what like doomsday cults make me think about that because I've been following that case mm-hmm. on the news pretty religiously, so to speak. And I feel, <laughs> no pun intended, <laughs> I feel like that sort of fell to the backdrop of everything else that's going on. So yeah. that's why I lost track yeah. of it. I, yeah. I was following that yep. story too. Yeah. But, okay, hmm, go on. Sorry to interrupt you. No, that's okay. Just kidding. <laughs> ODF is a UFO. We're a little, we're a little snarky today, you and <laughs> Very I. Very snarky today. Uh, okay, so this is back to this article on roswellbooks.com. Um, you, quote, ODF is a UFO-believing religious cult, or religious group anticipating an impending apocalypse based in Westlaco, Texas. The group was founded by Orville T. Nodrog. Although I don't think that's his real last name. I'm guessing not. on September third, nineteen sixty six. According to a local newspaper records, Nodrog was a longtime resident of Westlaco. On july sixteenth, nineteen eighty five, eight years before the notorious raid on the Branch Davidian compound near Waco, US federal agents raided the ODF compound in Westlaco, seizing close to a dozen weapons and looking the place over with a fine tooth comb. Um, the group's beliefs are outlined in a rather enigmatic document entitled the state of time station earth. The group claims that having quote returned in 1966, the outer dimensional forces found that humans had destroyed the pristine earth. The document discusses such topics as the humans inefficient use of the circle as the friction generating wheel and the endangerment of mankind by the Armageddon disease, which they were referring to AIDS. Back in the eighties, yeah, they believe that they believe that great advances were possible for humans by means of a quote universal time bank of energy. But and that's not the first time, yeah, no, that's not the first no. time we've heard of that. No, that isn't. Um, but that the wicked governments of man had ruined this potential. For this reason, they believe that the purgation, oh, purgation of the earth in order to facilitate future responsible habitation was inevitable and necessary. Yeah, so basically wipe out humans because we're destroying the planet. Yeah, because we suck. I mean, I'm not saying he's No, wrong, I'm not saying but... I disagree with that, but... <laughs> I feel like there are less drastic measures we could take. <laughs> like, everybody stay home. It's unbelievable how the environment has improved. Yeah. And smog has yep. gone down, and yep. yeah, since we've all been home. Blogger Eduardo Martinez posted the following in 2009. 
uh, quote, Orville T. And some of this is a little bit of a, a repeat. So I'm going to skip over this. Blah, 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 blah. For many years, the Walmart that is right next to the Armageddon Time Arc base has tried their best to buy them out and just get rid of them. Orville T. Gordon, that's his real last name, renamed himself Nodrog, which is Gordon spelled backwards. So I could rename myself Turk because I'm Kurt. <laughs> Wouldn't it be Truck? But I could have switched him around. I could. I'm going to be Turk. I'm going to be Turk Knetchney from now on. <laughs> Turk. What's up, Turk? It's such a douchey name. Sorry if there's anybody <laughs> named Turk listening. And we just lost, reminds our, me we of just lost our, We just lost our Turk fans. <laughs> Oh my god. He refused to sell out for decades, uh, has been claiming the creator will destroy the earth with the greatest of all floods. This is our punishment for the nosy CIA bothering Nodrog and his friends. And he and his followers will be flying away in UFOs to live happily ever after. He claims that the area he owns right next to Walmart, Church's Chicken, and Pizza Hut is the landing pad for the aliens to arrive. Well... Gordon would like to go to Gordon would go to the local Polga and sell stuff like honey and fruits. But I'm guessing he, that's like our like our, a, our uh, market? farmers market. Farmers market, okay. And would also sell space on the UFO for anyone interested in oh, leaving wow. the Earth. <laughs> well, okay, now now it's when getting the a time little came. now it's getting a little sketchy. It gets it gets more interesting. Martinez also includes a quote from the book Mavericks: A Gallery of Texas Characters by Gene Fowler. Quote, Orville T. Gordon came to the Rio Grande Valley from Wisconsin. Well, knew Wisconsin would have to be in there somewhere. <laughs> in the 1930s. I didn't. <laughs> that was a shock to me. And opened a lumber yard in Westlaco, according to data gathered by Douglas Curran. Or Curran? After conflicts with local and federal tax authorities in the early 1960s, as most cults have, they don't want to pay taxes, Gordon closed the business and began expanding his philosophical horizons. As Orville T. Gordon transformed himself into O.T. Nodrog, the lumberyard morphed into the Armageddon Time Arc base operation. In 1963, according to Nodrog literature, Ya Shua Hamishia, this is the Jesus, okay. said to be the son of the creator Yahweh, ordained Nodrog as Earth Coordinator. <laughs> Or channeler, the <laughs> outer dimensional forces. It's like cruise director. He's our cruise director on the Armageddon time arc. So I wanted to read. I was going to read through this article that came out. I'll just I'll do my best because it's really small. Okay. But it's it's from the Monitor in Texas, September 18, nineteen seventy five. Um, it's basically he sent a letter to the city commission, like you are bursting with egotistic false pride by photo flaunting your juvenile disaster training while you are facing a thing greater than a cataclysmic catastrophe. So it's a neatly typed two page message with underneath a pencil drawn heading featuring two triangle map of base area number six, also bearing the inscription point number one censored. I don't know. It's just a bunch of gobbledygook. I can't read some of this. You are illegally occupying measured territory of the ODF. There wasn't any explanation of what ODF is in the letter. By force, including conspiracy, deceit, and outright fraud. You have committed forgery willfully, distributing an altered measurement of September 1967. Wow. <laughs> you have practiced deceit to maintain power over the bond slaves. You are administering red despotism? Words are hard. By conspiracy and outright fraud. You have ignored all previous warnings and maintained a curtain of silence. This is a matter of obvious proof. You continue to waste and squander your time as you have done in the past with your energy supply. At least he's focused on like, There's he a, has some. Yeah, <laughs> he's some bullet points that he hits a lot. He's got some, he's got, he's. At least he's consistent he in his He makes some lunacy. sense with some stuff. <laughs> yeah. By doing so, you have placed yourselves and your bond slaves in terminal position. Then there was the reference to the juvenile disaster training. This one's a little easier to read. He said it must be learned to survive this timed and measured operation of the ODF and referred to that map, the triangle map. Such, oh my God. Such is the pattern of time mark 
Timarculization. Oh my God, he made up a word. Timarculization. <laughs> As ordered by Commander Hamashia of the Starship, the message said, followed by some handwritten numbers and symbols apparently intended as the name of the Starship. It shall take just 60 seconds of activation for your city to become non existent with no trace of humash- humatons and never to be rebuilt. For past proof, look to your ancient cities of Sodorn and Gomorrah. Oh, yeah, Sodom, Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah. Hello. If your blood be on your hands, the blood of all those beneath you shall also be on your hands. Our ships are in the time port of your time station Earth, ready to activate the sixth seal. They must be just sitting around in a room reading this, laughing know, hysterically. But this sounds a lot like... Or this, they're the, terrified. This does sound a lot like the Scientology stuff with Xenu. It does. Where he was like this galactic overlord. and That's true. Yeah. I don't know. He just goes on with a lot more gobbledygook and like handwritten signals and yada, yada, yada. So what I thought I'm getting, don't worry, people, I'm coming to the end of this. What is interesting is that they refer to the group and his followers, but there's no mention of anyone really specific. No. There's no. Does I wonder, does he have followers? That's my question. So he says aside, there was a TV interview with a spokesperson for the group who was described as bearded and extremely intense. It's probably him. That's what I thought, too, because there is a picture of him and he has a long white beard. I'm sure that's probably him. His name was Daniel Hoverson. It took place shortly after the Heaven's Gate suicides. Um, there isn't really much known about the group. There, there's implications that other people live there with him, but there's no other details about how many followers, if any, if it's men, women, and children, what their age, you know, there's no real information about who might actually be living there with him. Um, but Jordan did say that the city just kind of ignores them and pretends they don't exist. So it also that makes surprises sense. me. I thought that they, I, w- I so feel too. like they would do something. Shut that down. Yeah. Yeah, he's this, this kind of could be like what was that show that was on Fox, The Following? Oh yeah, and like there could be tons of people oh, that are in this cult creepy. that you just don't know about. They that don't are live in, there. That, that are in the police station or stuff like yeah. that. You never. That was a great show. I never watched it. Oh, it was so good. You would have loved it. I probably would have. You would have loved it. Um, he so Jordan said he's seen cars coming and going from there a couple of times, and that he's been attempted tempted to approach the gate or mail something. And I was, but he says I don't want to get involved, and I'm like, yeah, 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 no. Don't That's, engage. Whatever you do, no. don't engage. They have weapons, number one, and car bombs, apparently. I didn't see any contact info on their website. I looked. Not that I was going to reach out or anything. <laughs> Get him on the show. So it's kind of like a cult that's hiding in plain sight, but not really hiding because everybody knows they're there. They just pretend they're not there. Now I'm super curious about this. Like, I want to know if they have a lot of followers. Right. Or it feels it, like it could be a rabbit hole, but I, I couldn't find anything no. on Reddit. I'm gonna look into this. Like I'm, this is you're better at. Yeah, this Reddit. is this is up my alley. I well, like this. And I'm not good at Reddit. Like yeah. I'm not. I might not be searching how you're supposed yeah. to search, but I could not find one thing. There were other cult stuff on there and really religious stuff. I'm gonna check. Type this the out. word Armageddon, and you're gonna get a bunch of religious stuff. Oh yeah. Um, but I mean, their website is. There are so many pages I didn't even touch. I'm gonna look at this. this and is... and there's so much information, but it doesn't tell you anything. It just it tells you why you should be there or why you should follow them. And it gives you explanations of stuff, but it doesn't really tell you how you're supposed to, I don't know. It was just very confusing. When I look into this, keep it an eye on it so that I don't like move to okay. Texas and I'm not there waiting at the pizza hut for the aliens to come. So that's the Armageddon time. That arc. is weird. It's I'm going to just bizarre. Like I doomsday cults are creepy because yeah, they, they feel like they have nothing to lose because it's the end times. Right. And it scares me because right now those cults have to be like, see, this is all coming true. Like we said, it was, you know, you got the plague, you got, mm-hmm. you know, all this stuff going on right now that it's kind of... Murder hornets? Yeah. <laughs> I'm ready for murder hornets. <laughs> oh I really God. am. There I was just... a really big bee in my house the other day and I freaked out. <laughs> I can't even imagine a murder hornet. So I don't... Doomsday cults freak me out because they... Well, and they freak me out too because there's such a level of manipulation and like... Because the people who are like the head of the cult, they find the most vulnerable pe- people they can find, and they manipulate them yeah. and brainwash yeah. them. I've been I've been really fascinated by cults lately. I've been watching a lot of like YouTube cult Just stuff. Just the mentality behind yeah. it, you know, it's it's very strange. Brittany talked about in Wausau, Wisconsin. There's a cult that lives just outside the city that's trying to take the city over. And that would be a really interesting one to look into. I can't too. remember if I ever told you this, but my friend Erica, back in the day, her mom was. I'm not going to name it because it's not technically a cult. Okay. 
it's it's more like an offshoot. I don't know if you know what Est is. Est was like a self help seminar thing in the eighties, or okay. like in the eighties, that this group that we I went to see. I went to Chicago with her and her mom for a presentation by this group. And it's not a cult per se, but they use a lot of psychological manipulations that mm. cultists use to get you to come over their way of thinking. Hmm. So I was kind of excited. Is it like a pyramid scheme too or no? Not really a pyramid okay. scheme, but if you look up EST, it's an S. EST. EST? Yeah. That you was weren't going to say what it was. No, this is an EST. Oh, this okay. is like an it's offshoot. Like it's like an offshoot okay. of EST, but I went yeah, I to it and it. it was like the closest I've been to like being in a cult-like situation where I was aware of what they were doing. And then like Erica would tell me stuff that they would do during their seminars that were very uh, cultish mind control. Mm. This is how we get you to... Unethical? To, yeah. Not uneth- Not so much unethical, but they but would not let you go to the bathroom. Of. If you peed in your pants, you peed in your pants. Like that That's kind of unethical. stuff. unethical. <laughs> that, yeah. That's I mean, manipulation. It was, it was very eye-opening for me to go to that wow yeah but like i said i'm not going to name it because i don't even know if they're still around but it was more like a self-help better yourself thing but sounds like scientology est was kind of a little weird like that back in the 80s okay but anyway were you required to like pay money to learn oh yeah thousands of dollars thousands of dollars reminds me of scientology and there was another and this guy came to me to try to enroll me in it and everything that i said he would have some I mean, it was obvious that it was like counter. a script that he would return oh. with something that it was, it was really interesting. Yeah. But I would have said everything I would have said, I'm not drinking your Kool-Aid, man. <laughs> it's it's not weird putting on because your Nikes, I, man. I could see me being suckered into a cult. Oh I kind of, God, I kind really? of could. <laughs> I don't, know, I don't. Send a cute girl to, well, okay. You know, I guess and, if you put it that way. <laughs> kind of a sucker that way. <laughs> yeah. You know, so huh. part of me... You know, this was, I had, when I went down there, I had my walls up. I was aware of what was going on. And it was just yeah. really interesting to see. I would have been really uncomfortable and scared, uh, actually. Like, one of the things they did was, as part of the seminar, each person had to go in a room with a phone and call people they knew to tell them exactly their feelings about them. Oh. Because Erica called me one day and was telling me stuff, and it's like, this is weird. And then so she told Erica me was part of it. Too? She was in it for a while. Yeah. Wow. But like I said, it's not a cult, but it they do a lot of things that cults do psychologically. Hmm. So yeah. Anyway. Wow. <laughs> sorry to digress there. That's shady. Yeah. Okay. But yours is interesting. I'm going to look into this because I am fascinated by cults. I mean, I there am... was more. There were a lot more links I could have clicked on on people yeah. who blogged about it. But yeah. I mean, it's supposed to be a mini mystery. I think there's way more cults so. than people realize. Well, probably. So I didn't know there was one in That Wausau. was an interesting story. I was not expecting that. Yeah. So I am going to look into that. So a lot of information without really telling you anything. Yeah. Except how cuckoo it is. Yeah. They've clearly come up with their own... Instruction yeah, and manual. I like your webpage, if you're trying to get people in, make it a little more, ease them into the stuff. Don't just throw stuff on there about time, space, ship, earth, and right. you know, kind of lead them into what this stuff is. That's yeah. my advice to you. So, I'm guessing there aren't a lot of followers, but who knows? You, that's what creeps who me knows? out is you don't know. Right. Very interesting. That was a good story. Thanks. All right. My story is one that people have kind of asked for. You know, every now and then it comes up. My friend Mary that listens to the podcast asked if we were going to do it. So my story is about spontaneous human combustion. I love this topic. It's it's interesting. It freaks me out. It, if it's real. If it's real. It's and I freaky. think it's overblown, I guess. But yeah. The term spontaneous human combustion was coined by Paul Raleigh in a 1744 journal called Philosophical Transactions of the Royal Society of London. Sounds like a good read. Mm -hmm. It's described as a process in which a human body allegedly catches fire as a result of heat generated by internal chemical activity, but without evidence of an external source of ignition. It generally requires three to four hours of temperatures around 1500 degrees Fahrenheit for a body to be cremated. And that's hot. That's crazy hot. It's very hot. The whole idea of, uh, it's also called SHC, so I might call it SHC to okay. condense it. But the whole idea of spontaneous human combustion or SHC 
was kind of kept in the public eye by authors using it in novels. Charles Dickens, Mark Twain, and Herman Melville all had stories where characters died by spontaneous human combustion. Hmm. So that was one of the reasons I think it would kind of remained in the public eye was because authors were using it right. in their books. Yeah. The first recorded event of spontaneous human combustion happened in Milan, Italy in the late 1400s. A knight named Polonius Vorstius was having wine with his parents. After a few glasses of wine, he started to belch flames and then burst into flames himself in front of his parents. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> he belched flames? Belched flames and burst into flames in front of his parents. I'm yeah, just going to go out on a limb and say that didn't happen. <laughs> apparently it did. I mean, I that's... He belched that's, flames? That comes up... There, there, there's other there's accounts that are kind of weird. I've that, never heard that before. Okay. Yeah. Okay. He's part dragon, whatever. <laughs> it comes up again in another one too. Belching flames. Yeah. It's it's I have never heard of I, this. It's been I didn't either until I researched weird. this. Okay. Throughout the years, there have been quite a few notable cases of people succumbing to SHC. On February twentieth, seventeen twenty five. Innkeeper Nicole Millet, or Millet, I think it's probably Millet. Is it M-I-L-L-E-T? E yeah, Millet. Probably. Who was described as a, quote, serious drinker, burst into flames at the inn she worked at. After the fire was put out, all that was left of her was her skull, a couple of bones from her back, and her lower legs. A straw bed and several wooden objects near her body were somehow untouched by the flames. I've noticed alcohol was involved in two of these. It's going to be, it's going to, okay. yeah. Okay. Yep. You're going to get to that, Kurt? I'm going to get to that. <laughs> Her husband was tried for murder and found guilty, but he was eventually acquitted thanks to the testimony of a surgeon named Dr. Claude Nichols Lacotte, a guest at the inn who was there when the smell of smoke awoke the house and Nicole's body was discovered. He convinced the court that it was an act of God, but otherwise they thought her husband did it. <laughs> so, so, okay. Yeah. It wasn't a medical or scientific thing. It was an act of yeah. God. Yep. Okay. That was the 1400s or something, right? 1725. Oh, 1725. So relatively, still, relatively. Still of an age where people were ago. like, you know. <laughs> yeah, kind of, yeah. In 1731, the Italian Countess Cornelia de Bandy took a wine and camphor bath and then was put to bed by her maid. When her door was open the next morning, laying on the floor halfway between the bed and the window was a pair of unburned legs and a skull sitting on a pile of ashes. According to an awesome 2011 article on doctorsreview.com called, quote, A Fire Within, the article goes on to say, quote, The room was covered in soot, though nothing suggested a fire had taken place, save for the corpse and an empty oil lantern laying next to her. Hmm. Her body succumbed to the conflagration so fast it was later surmised that her torso disintegrated as she stood and her skull simply dropped into the pile of ashes below. <laughs> That's horrifying. <laughs> That's a horrifying thought. The far-fetched cause was thought to be lightning through the chimney. That came in through the chimney, came in through the fireplace. I suppose. I feel like that's more likely than spontaneous human combustion. But. I feel like that's reaching, though. One of the official reports from the case says, quote, Four feet distance from the bed, there was a heap of ashes, two legs untouched, from the foot to the knee with their stockings on. Between them was a lady's head, whose brains, half of the back part of her skull, and the whole chin were burnt to ashes, among which was found three fingers blackened. All the rest was ashes, which had this peculiar quality that they left in the hand when taken up, kind of a stinking moisture. <laughs> That's so gross. Oh, that is gross. Although there were two candles near her remains, the wicks were both untouched, even though the tallow had melted. Okay. That's weird. Another one. In 1967, a passenger on a... This one is weird. I never heard of this one. In 1967, a passenger on a bus in England saw blue flames in the window of an apartment building hallway. She thought it might have been a gas leak that had ignited, so she called the police. When the firefighters got to the apartment, they found the body of a homeless man named Robert Francis Bailey who had, quote, blowtorch-like blue flames bursting out of a hole in his stomach. Reports say they tried to extinguish the flames, but the man died of suffocation due to breathing in the fumes of his own burning stomach. It's also said that when Bailey was found, he had been biting into a mahogany stair post on the property so tightly that his jaws had to be pried apart to free him. What? <laughs> so that's... I don't know. There's so many weird things about that story. Yeah, like he burst into flames and the pain was so hard he that he bite was biting on, on a, a, 
a mahogany stair pole. Dude, just it's, scream. I mean, you're dying. I, yeah, I <laughs> Let don't it know. Out. That one's just bizarre. Someone's not setting a broken bone, you know, no. while you're awake. You're on <laughs> no. fire. You yeah. can scream. Yeah. <laughs> also in 1967 is the case of Mary Reeser, probably one of the most well-known cases of SHC. I bet I've seen the photo. Yes. On July 2nd, 1951, Mary's landlady came to her door to deliver a telegram and found the doorknob hot to the touch. She called the police and they entered the house only to find what was left of Mary in a chair. Part of her left foot was left behind, part of her backbone, and her skull, which some reports say was shrunken down to the size of a teacup. It said that plastic... Wait, 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 wait. Her skull had shrunken down to the size of a teacup? That's what some reports said. Other reports said it didn't. Okay. It said that plastic household objects at a distance from the seat of the fire were softened and had lost their shapes, but a stack of nearby newspapers were untouched. The report stated that in order to destroy the remains like it did... The fire had to burn with a white-hot intensity. Hmm. According to a 2018 article on the website allthatisinteresting.com called, quote, The Curious Case of Mary Reeser and Spontaneous Human Combustion, the article says, quote, Dr. Wilton M. Krogman, a professor of physical anthropology at the University of Pennsylvania and an experienced fire researcher, wrote that all of the fire deaths he, that out of all the fire deaths he had investigated, he said, I cannot conceive of such a complete cremation without more burning of the apartment. Yeah, that's so, weird. Yep. So the picture that I'm thinking of in my mind, she was in a chair, yes, right? And there's part of a foot sitting there. And you can see yes. her foot. Yeah. 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 I, I, that picture is, I think that's yeah. what has always freaked me out. Yeah. Because and the one that I used in the evidence. teaser picture is somebody's walker, I think. And there's just part, the bottom part of their foot is there. Yeah, it's so freaky. Another one, in 1982, a British mentally handicapped woman named Jeannie Safin reportedly spontaneously caught fire in front of her father, Jack, who was with her. The flames were put out with water and Jeannie was taken to the hospital, but she died eight days later. Jack's son-in-law, Don, who was home at the time of the fire, reported that Jeannie had flames coming from her mouth and was making roaring noises like a dragon, but otherwise didn't seem to be in pain or react to the flames. That's weird. It's so weird because it comes from inside of you. Yeah. Not an external source. You know, they said that it was almost like it wasn't, she didn't even realize it was happening, that she was just like sitting not in pain or anything, but yet she was making sounds like a dragon and belching fire weird. out of her mouth. Wow. Like Bo- roaring like a dragon. Yeah. Both okay. Jack and Don have repeatedly said that there was no source of ignition in the kitchen except for the pilot light on the gas stove. Her clothes were burned and hospital records found that her mouth was undamaged. What? So weird. Yeah. Okay. In June 1995, Vietnam veteran Frank Baker was planning a day of fishing with his friend Pete Willie. Baker said, quote, We were getting ready for fishing and sitting on the couch. Everything was great. Pete was sitting next to me and we were having a hell of a time. Suddenly, out of nowhere, Baker's body burst into flames. His friend Pete said, quote, It was the damnedest thing I've ever seen. Frank was freaking out and making me freak out. Uh, <laughs> no kidding. Understandable. The flames were extingu- extinguished and Baker went to the doctor. After examining him, all the doctor could figure out that was that the fire appeared to burn from the inside out on his body. It also happened again while he and Willie were out on a lake fishing one day, apparently. It happened twice? That's what they said. Just like before, flames began to engulf his body out of nowhere, concentrating on his arms and torso. And again, with his friend Willie's assistance, the flames were put out. Did he jump in the lake? That's what I would have done. That's what I would have done, too. It does seem like it's concentrated around your torso. Yeah, yeah. And shoots out your mouth for some reason. We're going to get to like what Weird people think is one of the, is the theory why this is happening. Okay. But that does Good, not. Good, so I can avoid but it. But <laughs> that does not account for ones like this. Like the guy with the hole in his stomach yeah. with the flames shooting out of it. Yeah, that's weird. So yeah. Uh, in one of the most recent cases in 2010, 76-year-old Michael Faraday was found burned to death in the living room of his home in Clareview Park, Ballybane, Galloway, Ireland. I believe it's Ireland's only known SHC case. Faraday's neighbor was awakened by the sound of his smoke alarm. He went outside to find heavy smoke coming from Faraday's house. The fire department was called and made their way into the home. According to Wikipedia, quote, Faraday's body had been found lying on his back with his head closest to an open fireplace. 
The fire had been entirely confined to the sitting room, and the only damage found was a totally burnt body, the ceiling above him and the floor directly beneath him. Hmm. No trace of any accelerants were found, and there was nothing to suggest foul play had taken place. This is 2010? Yes. Okay. The coroner subsequently made a statement to an inquiry saying, quote, This fire was thoroughly investigated, and I'm left with the conclusion that this fits into the category of spontaneous human combustion, for which there is no adequate explanation. So, just bizarre. I, I was hoping that it was some kind of old-timey thing that we didn't have to worry about. <laughs> yeah, I didn't realize that one happened <laughs> like in 2010. Yeah, oh. that was kind of bizarre. I didn't realize that. Hmm. Uh, and there's here's some commonalities about people that die okay. from spontaneous alcohol that it, it's in a lot of them okay the surrounding area near the body is undamaged by fire even though there might be combustible materials in the area mm-hmm. burns and smoke damage might appear just above and below the victim's body but nowhere else there's often no obvious source of fuel that would explain the fire the core of the body often seems to be where the fire emanates from leaving the extremities like the hands or feet or partial arms or partial legs left which you see in pictures. Mm -hmm. Typical victims are elderly, female, and obese, live in North America or Western Europe, and have a history of alcohol dependency. Mm. Like so many of those involved drinking or wine. Right. What What I think is interesting too is that going back to the where there's like limbs left, is that suggests how intense that fire burned, that it was so concentrated to one area it didn't spread to anywhere else in the body. All that is usually left in these cases is a pile of greasy ashes with a very unpleasant odor. So gross. Yes. So so much of this doesn't make sense. Uh, and I spent, I went down a rabbit hole one day and spent way more time than I ever thought I would spend <laughs> figuring out how hot a cigarette burns. Okay. Uh, the human body needs around two hours of roughly 1600 degrees Fahrenheit heat to cremate it. Assuming it's a cigarette or something that ignites the body, a burning cigarette tip is usually around 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit. And like I said, I I spent so much time looking this stuff up. The temperature during a puff, though, might hit 1,600 degrees Fahrenheit, but only for a few seconds. Okay. So what's going on here? What is is causing this to happen? Stoking that fire inside of them, yeah. So now we get to a bunch of theories. Okay. Theory number one poltergeists Ooh. a lot of people think poltergeists are responsible for these people bursting into flames and were there accounts <laughs> of these, like activity for these, first, for these first three theories all i have written after it is i guess question mark because <laughs> <laughs> i don't know well were there I mean, like accounts not, not of paranormal that I saw activity any, i didn't see anything about any accounts of mm. of ghostly activity okay but that leads to the question that some people don't even think poltergeists they some people think ghosts can exist, but not necessarily poltergeists. Okay. That they cannot physically act with something, knock on a, a cabinet or whatever. Mm-hmm. So if they can do that, can they cause somebody That's to like burst? That's like the hallmark of a poltergeist is manipulating your environment. Yeah, but some people don't things. believe poltergeists exist. Hmm. That they, they, well, they, sure. They can see ghosts existing, but that they're not able to interact with, with mm-hmm. physical okay. material. But there's a long way between knocking on a door and causing somebody to burst into flames right you know so i don't really buy the poltergeist no i don't see the tie-in really. no i don't see the tie-in i either. don't feel like fires are a common poltergeist hallmark yeah i don't either okay i don't either theory number two ufos okay <laughs> the main idea behind this seems to be that these people are being abducted and like beamed onto the ship, but something goes bad during them getting beamed onto the ship during an abduction. Why would they abduct somebody in the middle of a bar or on a boat with people around them? I don't know. That but that, make that sense accounts for to some me. of these that were the, where the person went to bed and the next morning they sure. found them. That some people think that maybe they were getting abducted and something went haywire with, you know. You know, I like a good UFO explanation. <laughs> this isn't a good UFO fitting. explanation. No, it's not fitting. No. So, but that's one of the theories is that it's UFOs, okay. you know, something, you're beaming somebody up and something goes a little awry, bell-shaped and <laughs> yeah, you burst into flames. Uh, I'm just saying no to that one. I don't even know what bell-shaped is the things that pear-shaped. Something goes a little caca. We'll just say that. Yeah. Sideways. A little sideways. <laughs> uh, theory number three, ball lightning, I guess. But again, it's going to come through somebody's... It's not usually an indoor phenomenon. No, and it's going to come through somebody's fireplace, 
just right that it bounces out of the fireplace and <laughs> ignites them on fire. And Only if, in the torso. And if you were ignited, if you something, you know, lit you on fire, that'd be one thing. But these people burned at like a high. Yeah, and I feel like people who are struck by lightning, this is not what they experience. People no. survive being struck by lightning yeah. all the time. I don't ever which want is to. Freaky as hell, <laughs> but. Is. And they usually have like severe burns. If I ever did, I would want a superpower to come from it. <laughs> That's all I know. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah, I, this doesn't. I don't think this correlates with a lightning strike. No. What little I know about that. That's why poltergeist, UFOs, and ball lightning just had, I guess. Because I don't know what else to say about that. <laughs> yeah. Theory number four, methane. Oh. Another theory is that methane, which is a gas that is produced by bacteria in your stomach, the gas builds up and is somehow ignited by enzymes, which are proteins in the body that help with chemical reactions. But then people also say that the biggest one of the biggest methane producer is a cow so why aren't, aren't cows bursting into flames out in the field i eat a lot of beans <laughs> so you would think that this would yeah. be a problem for me yeah <laughs> <laughs> yep you know I, I don't really buy them i could see the i mean methane, i understand the methane science is obviously flammable yeah. due to people yeah. that light their farts right oh, you know God. which i've never done no thank god <laughs> No, that, I that mean, might be a future episode. Maybe we'll try that during a future episode. <laughs> well, not in the studio. <laughs> no, we'll the back studio. Or something. I do feel like there's at least a science explanation. There, that, yeah, yeah. I mean, but, it makes sense, but but then I feel you like... You think it would happen more often. I feel like they're reaching for something to ignite it, to cause mm-hmm. it. Like enzymes, I can't see an en- enzyme chemical reaction going Although we just bad. talked about, my husband called me to tell me that he saw in the news that... Yeah. Um, just hand sanitizer left in the sun can spontaneously combust. Like yeah. cars have started on fire. Because of hand sanitizer. Because of that. But, but that makes sense. You you have it in a plastic bottle. The, it might expand. concentrate. Well, it might concentrate. The plastic might con- like act like a lens and concentrate heat yep. onto the... So that's mm. theory number four. Methane buildup. Not really buying it. It's more plausible than the first three, but, yeah, but I'm still, still not, really not seeing the plausibility. Theory number five, static electricity somehow builds up in the body and causes a spark that ignites the body. That yeah, I'm not really buying it. I've, I've, in winter, I get shocked every day in my apartment. My, and uh, shocks that I can see. Yeah. Shocks oh, yeah, that yeah. I can physically see the lightning bolt jump to my finger and What's I don't start on fire. What's freaky is in the winter. Like, oh, when you move your night? blanket. When you move oh, your blanket, God, it's, it's like, like the a, northern lights. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah. And I'm like, please don't fart, Jim, because you're going to set this whole bed on fire. <laughs> yeah. So I'm not really buying the static electricity either. No, I mean, it doesn't make sense. Like how much static we encounter, yeah. it yeah. doesn't make sense either. And that would be external, not internal. Yeah. Yep. Theory number six some kind of short circuit that somehow the electrical fields in the human body just somehow short circuit causing a chain reaction that causes internal heat. That one I could, I mean, I mean, if it's a one in a million chance, it's that like it's a gonna, perfect storm. Of yeah. It would have to be a perfect storm of circumstances, but I could, I could sort of see this one. I kind of could. Yeah. But again, we do have an, you know, there is a like, yeah. you know, yep. I don't know. I don't know enough about it to be able to explain it. No. But sort of makes sense. Yeah, sort of. Are there more theories? There's more theories. (laughs) Okay, good. (laughs) Do they get more plausible as you go? Okay, good. The last one, I think, is the one that makes sense to me. Okay. Um, Theory number seven, pyrotrons. In his 1990 fuck... (laughs) <laughs> well, is it a book I written in 1994? Flagged. I hope I don't get flagged for swearing in this episode. <laughs> Fook. I'm not sure Fook is a square <laughs> In his 1995 book titled <laughs> Ablaze, author Larry E. Arnold hypothesizes that there are subatomic particles he calls pyrotrons in the human body that zip around between atoms and sometimes collide, which can cause a chain reaction and heat. When a person is agitated by stress, this collision happens more often, making people more likely to burst into flame. <laughs> and I'm so, I, you would think that you and I would. You would think that in the current state of what's <laughs> happening in our country between everything, civil unrest and yeah. the coronavirus, people would be bursting yeah. into flames left and right. But, you know, as far as like there being like this weird a particle that could cause it, that I can kind of understand. Like whatever is yeah. causing this might be something that we don't know about. Again, perfect storm of circumstances. Yeah, though. that these pyrotrons would sometimes collide and do this. These pyrotrons sound like real jerks. They do. Number eight, cartography of combustion. Also from Larry Arnold in his book, Ablaze. 
This comes from a February 15th, 2011 article on Vice.com called, quote, The Learning Corner, Some Theories About Spontaneous Human Combustion. The Learning Corner? The Learning Corner. Okay. So some Theories About Spontaneous Human Combustion. That was written by Larry Arnold, who okay. talked about the pyrotrons. In the article, Arnold says, quote, Another theory I'm working on is called the cartography of combustion. I've plotted the many instances of abnormal fire phenomena related to people and property in the United Kingdom. I've noticed that most can be connected by straight lines. Some lines link five, six, or sometimes as many as a dozen anomalous fires. Our findings are somewhat similar to the idea of ley lines, which are based on the supposed geographic alignments of things like ancient monuments and other places of interest that are traditionally associated with earth energy mysteries. I believe these connections follow lines of energy that flow around the planet and that heretofore were unknown and identified geophysical energy. Under the correct circumstances, these can cause spontaneous combustion in property, buildings, and people. Hmm. Ley lines, I kind of buy. The idea of lines of, you know what ley lines mm -hmm. are. Yeah, lines of energy that go around the earth, that yeah. the pyramids line up and all these other... Stonehenge and all these things line up in these specific lines that yeah. were thought to be lines of energy that we can't see that go around the planet. And he says that these are basically another example of that, where these people, these buildings are on this line that could cause them to hmm. spontaneously combust. Okay. Don't know what I think about that one. Theory number nine, alcoholism. Uh, it's basically just a buildup of the storage of fuel in the body. According to an April 13th, 2017 article on DailyBeast.com called, quote, The Mysterious Case of Drinking and Spontaneous Human Combustion, the article says, quote, Why does this idea persist? Consider, the most vocal advocates of the combustion theory came from the temperance movement. While the link between intemperance and inferno appears not to have started with them, they found it rather handy in making their case. It was another arrow in their quiver, and no arrow demands attention quite like a flaming arrow. Hmm. So that is kind of with the temperance movement that if you drink, you might burst into flames, so hmm. don't drink. That's crazy. But alcohol is a factor in a lot of these it's flammable. cases. Yeah, it, it is. So I don't think it's due to an alcohol buildup in the body, because if it was, people in Wisconsin would be going up like sparklers <laughs> on the 4th of July. Right. You know, so. Again, there's some unique chemistry happening in yeah. there. Yeah, yep. Hmm. Theory number 10, acetone. In a December 17th, 2012 article on RealClearScience.com called, quote, How to Avoid Spontaneously Combusting, the article says, quote, Seeking an answer to the combustion conundrum, microbiologist Brian Ford recently searched through the well-documented cases of spontaneous human combustion and realized one commonality. All of the victims seem to have been unwell. When we're sick or the body is severely stressed, Blood glycogen, glycogen, glycogen? I think it's a, glycogen. Glycogen. A carbohydrate that our muscles use for fuel can become easily depleted. This leads to fat molecules getting broken down and used as energy instead. <laughs> it's if called the, ketosis. We're gonna, yep, <laughs> okay. it's coming up. If the process were accompanied by cellular starvation, which can occur during chronic illness or even during a strenuous gym workout, acetone can be produced. It's acetone that Ford theorizes may be the culprit for spontaneous human combustion. Not only is it highly flammable, but it can also easily mix with water and lipids and can thus permeate throughout the body. Avoid activities and diets which promote ketosis. <laughs> ketosis? Ketosis? Ketosis. The bodily state where levels of ketones like acetone are elevated. These include alcoholism, starvation, and diets based on low carbohydrate and high fat protein intake. So yeah. With the popularity of the keto diet right now. Yeah, you would think that this would Yeah. This makes sense though. It makes sense to me, but I think all it's making sense with is that it could cause a buildup of this it still doesn't this flammable explain the ignition. It doesn't explain the ignition. You know, so huh. I don't know. And finally, theory number eleven, and this one I, this one, I think, explains a lot of the cases, but it does not explain the cases where somebody sees somebody just randomly burst into flame out of their mouth. or shooting flames out of your stomach so bad you're gnawing on the, <laughs> the banister of the staircase, <laughs> you know? And this is theory number 11, the Wick effect. Discovered in 1998 by scientists... I have clientists. Discovered in 1998 <laughs> by scientists in the UK... Basically, when you're sitting there in your chair, in your nightgown or pajamas or whatever, you're more or less an inside-out candle. Think of a candle. It has this wick made of some sort of absorbent material 
inside of a different material that serves as the fuel, usually wax or tallow or some kind of fat or whatever. The heat of the flame melts the wax, which absorbs into the wick to keep the flame burning. Mm -hmm. That's how a candle works. Okay. So if you're sitting there in your chair conked out from one too many old fashions or whatever, and you're smoking a cigarette and you kind of pass out and the cigarette ignites your nightgown or pajamas, it starts to burn quickly like you'd imagine it would. But then as it starts to burn your flesh, the fat from your body starts to liquefy and gets absorbed by your clothing, which then burns steadily like a candle with the supply of your melting fat keeping it going. I mean, that makes sense. It's gross, but it makes sense. Yeah, and it can burn at a very high temperature, but it's like a candle where it gives off this high temperature, but you don't burst into flames where you just give off this crazy heat without bursting into flames like and a candle does not burst out, yeah so you're you, not moving around yeah yeah which would add fuel to the fire really yeah, yeah weird so yeah it can burn at a very high temperature but stays contained mostly in itself huh. according to a 2011 article on gizmodo called quote how spontaneous human combustion works the article says quote on the bbc television program qed Dr. John DeHaan demonstrated the wick effect with a dead pig. They wrapped the poor thing in a blanket, then used a small drop of gasoline and a spark. It took a while for the flame to catch on, but eventually it did, and flames began burning intensely hot but with low flames. The pig burned completely, even its bones were incinerated, but the surroundings were mostly spared. Only a nearby television, the floor below, and the ceiling right above the pig were affected by the fire. It's exactly what the result of most reported mm. cases of spontaneous human combustion look like. The theory behind the wick effect is that the spark, for a human it might be a burning cigarette or a spark from a fireplace, mm. burns through clothing, then splits the skin enough to access subcutaneous fat. Most victims are alone and presumed to have fallen asleep, so they don't immediately notice the spark. The fat is then absorbed into the clothing and behaves like a candle wick, fueling the flames until no fat is left. Mm. You might think that a pig has a lot more fat than a human. We actually have a similar fat content and a similar skin composition to our piggy friends. So it makes sense that limbs would sometimes remain intact since they contain less fat. Hmm. And that makes sense. Well, and back in the day, fire was the primary form of heat and light for people. Yeah, And, you know, looking into this, that one... I can't remember which one it was, Millet, was some one of them was laying First with their one. head near a fireplace. Yeah. Maybe a spark jumped out, landed on their clothing... The Others one, were the one with the mentally handicapped girl. One of the investigators said that when he went there, they couldn't find any source, but he noticed that the dad had fresh tobacco just put in his pipe. So mm. he's wondering if maybe he was smoking his pipe and went to like knock the tobacco out, and a just a random spark landed on the girl's clothing, and maybe she had something spilled on there that caused the clothing to go up. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't explain the flame shooting out of her mouth. Yeah, that's weird. Or roaring like a dragon. So in situations where it's a person in their bedroom at night and they go there the next morning and this happens, this I could the wick effect I totally yeah. understand. Yeah. Your your pajamas or whatever are feeding right. are soaked with your fat. So it's acting like a candle. And I think that's why a lot of plastic things in that one case, the plastic things around the area were melted and misshapen because of the heat, the heat but there off. wasn't enough heat for the newspapers to burst into flame. Right. Like you would need, you know, think of like a space heater making things really hot, but not causing things to burst right. into flame. Yeah. I think that's why things like flammable newspapers don't catch fire, but plastic things melt because it's just giving off a ton of heat over a long period of time. Mm-hmm. So, Why the doorknob was hot when the yeah, woman Yeah, I mean, went th- that totally apartment. makes sense to me, but it does not explain other supposed cases where the guy's buddy bursts into flames on the couch in front of him or the homeless guy was found with the flame shooting out of his stomach. Yeah, that's crazy. So that's pretty much it. What do you wow. think? What wow. Do, what? Well, I think it's obviously a thing. It well, happens. Ob- yeah, but, and I was going to get to that towards the end. People might think spontaneous human combustion happens more than it does. There's actually fewer than 150 cases of it that have been reported over the last 2,000 years. That's a lot. (laughs) That's a lot, but it's not something that happens. It's not as much as I thought it was. Right. I actually thought it was more rare than that. Really? I I thought thought there were maybe only a handful, but you don't hear about it. No. Like, this is not something that's on the news. No. Hmm. So I, I, I I, I buy the wick effect in. Okay, assume that these 150 cases are legit spontaneous human combustion. 
I would think that the wick effect would maybe fit 100, 125 of mm-hmm. them, but I think it still leaves some that don't make sense, that right. something is happening. The flame shooting out of their mouths. Yeah. I don't know if, if it's like a weird chemical reaction in the body that is like a one in a one billion billion chance and right. it just happens every now and then. I don't know. I don't know. I think the wick effect explains a lot, but I don't think it necessarily explains all of them. Hmm. So that's my take on it. Makes me really glad that I'm not a smoker and that I don't sleep next to a fire source. I mean, we have a wood-burning fireplace, but we make sure that sucker is (laughs) out before we go to bed. Yeah. I'm not a heavy drinker. I feel pretty safe. I think, are you on a keto diet? No. Okay. I tried it. Chris is not a keto girl. No, you're not a keto girl? No, she likes her carbs. I don't need you bursting into flame in front of me (laughs) during a podcast. Uh, Yeah, that'd be, I guess it'd be good content. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. That's weird. I I don't know. Yeah, it's mysterious. It's still mysterious. I feel like we sort of have an explanation, but... But not for everything. Right. And And it's freaky. As far as what the other explanation is, I don't know. I think it's a... One in a, like I said, one in a million, million, million chance of a, of a weird chemical reaction going haywire. Yeah. And I think that's that might be what happens. Yeah, I But agree. I don't like that idea because you never know. I could just randomly burst into right. flames. But it doesn't happen like ever. Uh, you know, it happens once in a while, but not. Well, in 2000 years, only yeah. 150 people. Yeah. That's like your chances of that happening to our, it's like winning the lottery. Yeah, basically. So at the <laughs> end of the day. Winning a really crappy lottery. <laughs> end of the day, I think most of it can be explained, but not all of it. And I don't know what to say about the ones mm. that aren't. It's freaky no matter what. It's just really freaky to Unless think about. Unless those ones, the other ones might be embellished where maybe the guy didn't really have flames shooting out of his stomach. Yeah, it could be. You know, so I don't know. Hmm. Don't know. Weird. Definitely weird. And lastly, according to a 2009 article on the Mental Floss website called, quote, The Quick Seven, Seven Cases of Spontaneous Human Combustion, the article says that George Mott of Crown Point, New York, died of spontaneous human combustion. His son discovered the three and a half pound pile of his father's bones and ashes the day after the two of them watched an episode of The Twilight Zone, after which his father said to him, quote, nothing weird like that ever happens to me. I wish it would. Hmm. So that's weird. You know, be careful what you wish for, I guess. It's like that guy who wants to get eaten by a cannibal. Like, what's your problem? Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. What I mean? But he uh, thought he said nothing so weird, weird ever happened to him. Next day, he was spontaneously human combustion. Yeah. So I don't know. Weird. I don't know. Weird. But what were you going to say about Hellier? Oh, um, they just talk about ley lines. That's what made me think of Hellier. Oh, ley lines? I, I, we're going to have to do an art, uh, article. We're going to have to do an episode about ley lines at yeah, some that'd be point really because interesting. it is fascinating. You need to find a, wi- a way to watch Hellier, though, because I it was really good. Like, so good that I might watch it again just because I have a tendency to half watch stuff. Yeah. And that maybe the other half of me will pick, pick up on stuff <laughs> I missed before. I've had a couple of weird synchronicities now, though, that I don't normally notice that stuff. I had one during this episode. Really? That I was actually going to say, but you were talking. Oh, interesting. Like, uh, way back when... The name of that article was that I talked about was all I have written down is what I'm looking for here. As I, as I get done flipping through my notes, I throw the page on the floor. So I <laughs> sometimes have to dig through them. All I had written down was where the Paul Rowley first talked about where he named it spontaneous human combustion. It was in a journal called Philosophical Transactions of the Royal Society or something. Uh-huh. All I had was philosophical transactions written down. So while you were talking, I was on my phone and I was typing the word philosophical right when you said the word philosophical. Oh, really? Which I in thought was article? really weird. Oh, interesting. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Well, that, so the two, I mentioned this on uh, Facebook, but Brian's podcast, The Film Deviant. I was driving along listening to that, and it's about a horror movie. He was talking about a horror movie, Demons, I think. And uh, something he said in the podcast made me start thinking about my one of my all-time favorite movies, which is Pulp Fiction. Yeah. And as I'm driving down the road thinking about a couple of the scenes that I just love and like some of the lines that are so great, he literally says something like, because I think he must have... I was drifting off, of course, in my own world. I think he met someone who was like a, a director who's like an idol of his. And yeah. he said it would be like a fan, a huge fan of Pulp Fiction 
or and then he went on to something else i'm like i'm thinking about pulp fiction right now as he says pulp yeah. fiction in the middle of a podcast that's about horror movies like yeah. it makes no sense but that's it ha- that's happens to me all the time well and then i was supposed to do this craft with sherry hi sherry um she listens it's, it's this watering can that you connect these twinkle lights to. It's like a garden craft. I was supposed to do that with her and some other coworkers last weekend, but I had to cancel. But I still have the twinkle lights, and I'm going to do it on my own. And just like yesterday or the day before, my aunt, out of the blue, emails my mom and I a picture of the same exact craft. <laughs> and it was like... Oh, isn't this really neat? And she never forwards stuff like that yeah. to us. So it was isn't like that weird. Wh- weird. That's so weird. And yep. now I'm starting to notice that. And yep. I've never and noticed I've had this stuff. the eleven elevens like crazy lately. That never like the last to me. five days in a row. And it wasn't like I would I mean, like one day I turned on my laptop to charge my uh, fitness thing mm. and just happened to turn it on and look at the clock when it was eleven eleven. Mm. Like it's been the last five days. In a row. So the 11-11s are getting crazy again. That never happens to me. I've never... But I've talked to a lot of people lately that have had a lot of synchronicities lately. So Somebody on the Facebook page, and I'm sorry, I'm terrible. I can never remember who said what, but we were. it was a long thread about Hellier. Yeah. And I, one of the things you would love about that series is the synchronicities that happen. Yeah. It's crazy. Um, I need to watch that. But they said to me, have the synchronicity started for you yet since watching this? And I'm like, well, no, that I don't notice that stuff. But it's <laughs> weird that are. now they are starting yeah. to happen. We need to and my it. husband pointed out a couple. Of, like yep. the first one, the Pulp Fiction one I noticed, the email about the craft, my husband like, oh, another synchronicity. Like yeah. he pointed that out. I wouldn't yep. have even noticed. And let, oh, so I, weird. With me, it comes in waves. I mean, there's mm-hmm. times where there'll be nothing. And then all of a sudden there'll be this this week or two weeks where it's just one after the other. So yeah. we need to do an episode on synchronicity. Yeah, synchronicity be really is cool. really, really, um, maybe, maybe next episode. We'll work that would on be that. Awesome. Yeah. So yeah. So there you go. That is crazy death, uh, doomsday cult Armageddon and cult. <laughs> spontaneous yeah. human combustion. Right. Two completely different topics, but equally interesting. You can go first with okay. song. I'm going to surprise you by my, my song selection is a country song. Wow, I, I was know. actually thinking about doing a country song. I, I have, wasn't gonna. I'm not gonna do it because I don't. It's not like one of those songs that means the world to me, but it's just oh, a song I love. And yeah. mine, mine would have been what I thought about doing was the song "Love" by Sugarland, the country band Sugarland. Sugar I Land. love their song "Love." Okay. So that's funny you said that because I was going to originally do a country song, but I didn't. Yeah, I don't listen to a lot. My husband loves country. I don't listen to a lot of it. Um, I only really can get into a handful of people. And it's not like this song means the world to me or anything, but I just really like it. But the artist is Kelsey Ballerini, and the song is Homecoming Queen. I've never heard that one. It's a really simple song. Um, I love her voice. I think she has a really cool voice. But the song is basically like... Um, and I think we all went to high school with somebody like this. It's like the, the song's kind of about the mean girl, like the homecoming yeah. queen who kind of gets some kind of joy out of people being mean. And like it's it talks about how, but what's really going on with you? Are you even happy? Yeah. Do you wear the smile because yep. you have to? Do you wear the crown because you have to? What's going on at home? And it's sort of like, the world's not going to end if you show people who you really are. And I'm but like, that's, oh man, there's, that's, a lot of there's so many girls like I went to high yep. school like that, you know, who were mean just for sport. Yep. And they always were like the popular people. And I never understood how the mean people were so popular. But the odd thing is at my school, the homecoming and like prom queens were always really nice girls. They were yeah. not the mean people. Yeah. So it's sort of a contradiction, but I, I understand that at other places, the mean girl was the prom queen or the homecoming queen, but it's a really pretty song. It's, it's, I just like the, the way the, you know, words are crafted together yep. and she has a really cool voice. Yeah. So I'm gonna have Krista to look recommended a country song. I am impressed. <laughs> I, I love country music. Like I went through, I think we talked about this in another episode. I went through a big country music phase back you like in the old day. Old Dominion or Gar- something? I love Old Dominion. Yeah. Back when Garth Brooks first came out. Oh yeah. That's when I go by my friend's house and he'd play that and I'd yell at him to shut it off and then after like a week I borrowed the CD because I started to really like it Yeah. and then I kind of got out of it but now when I go somewhere with my friend Miranda she loves country music so I put on a country music station in my car The Duke? You should turn on The Duke I think it is The Duke That's Jim's favorite uh, A lot of times like after I drop her off or whatever, I don't really, I don't put a CD or I don't put anything and I keep listening to it and it's like, and I'm always texting her. I'm like, who sings such and such song? I'm like, I really like this. Country music gets a bad rap. Country music is very good, but a lot like Old Dominion is kind of 
old school. Pop country, though. They're oh, kind of, right. you know, they're not like, but old school country, like twangy stuff, I don't like. See, I'd prefer that. Give really? me Patsy Klein. Yeah, I think we talked, Give me I think we talked about Hank that Hank Williams once. Sr. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice song. I'm going to have to look that one yeah, up it's a because good one. I like that. Well, we'll post it on okay. Facebook. Yeah, we'll post. I'll post mine too. My song is one of these songs. If I had a top 10 list, this would be in the top 10. Like, I love, love, love this song. It's from 1989. And I don't think you would have any idea it was from the 80s. I don't think it sounds 80s. And it was one of these songs that people who know it love this song, think it's one of the best songs ever, but it was never a popular song. Mm. And the, the reason most people know it is because it was in Nightmare on Elm Street Part 4 in a scene where the main character, where the final girl, yeah. her brother is in his room practicing karate with nunchucks and everything. Okay. And it's, if you go to the YouTube, you know, I'm going to post the YouTube video, but if you go underneath it, like there's comments like, the song makes me want to practice karate in my room. Like that's where everybody knows this song from. Okay. And the song I'm talking about, it's a, it's a, it's a faster song. It's like a good pump up song. The song is called Anything, Anything, and it's by the band Drama Rama. I remember Drama Rama. And I love this song. Okay. Uh, it's been one of those songs that has, st- I first heard it in Nightmare on Elm Street. And okay. I was like, you didn't have the internet back then. And I'm like, who sings this song? Right. And I ended up finding out it was Drama Rama, and I bought their greatest hits CD, which I still listen to quite a bit. Hmm. And I think I love... I'm sure I'll recognize it. You will. It. You will. Once once the guitar starts at the beginning, it's like really recognizable. But I love the lyrics in the song. It's like almost an emo song before emo ah, was around. Okay. And it's just, I think anything, it's... Anything, anything? Anything, anything. Okay. When I used to drive to work with my friend April, we were driving one day, and I don't remember how it came up, but I was I had like a CD in or something, a mixed CD, and that came up. And she's like, I love this song. And she was like the first person I think I ever met that liked that song too. So I just have memories of her and I driving to work, blaring that on my car <laughs> stereo and us singing along to the song. Yeah. So I just love it. I have no, I don't, there's no. Sentimental story Sentimental, but it. I just think it's such a good song. Okay. And it's such an underrated song. So it is Anything Anything by the band Drama Rama. Drama Rama. Okay. I will post that in The Strangers. Nice. Do we have any questions? I can't find my question. (laughs) I can read a pickle joke while you're... Please do. While you're looking. Oh, my gosh. Okay. So... Okay, that's... Okay. I cannot remember which one I read last. Okay, so, man. Miss Jones, why is there a pickle behind your ear? Miss Jones, oh, dear, I must have eaten my pencil for lunch. (laughs) (laughs) That's not terrible. (laughs) One more. Why is it simple to condense pickle stories? <laughs> Why? Because pickles are easy to digest. These are just nonsensical. Okay, I'm doing one more because you're still looking. What's green and shoots below par golf? <laughs> what? Jack Pickleus? Yes. Wow. That's what it is. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> that's really funny. Oh, that's pretty good. All right. That's enough pickle jokes for today. Uh Uh-oh, I don't like that look. (laughs) No, this could... I don't think it'll annoy people, but this is one of those touchy questions. Oh, Oh boy. Okay. The question just is... And we need more questions, people. The link should be on our, our pinned... Thing. Yes. On Maybe I'll Facebook. post it again just so we can get more it questions. It is. It's right up Because I'm top. getting near the top of the questions. Okay. People really liked our answers for the last one about a moment that oh, stayed yeah. with us. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Today's question is just Are either of you religious? Oh. I think we've no. kind of touched on this. <laughs> That's my answer. No. Like, not at all? No. I was raised Catholic. Well, I was raised Catholic too. I went I'm to confirmed. A private... I'm... Oh, me too. Yeah. I went to a private Catholic school for six yeah. years. I sang in the church choir, went to, uh, what were the ca- cate- what were the classes you went to after catechism? Catechism? Catechism. Yeah, I went to catechism classes all through high school. Yeah. But I don't, I'm not Catholic. Like, I'm not Catholic anymore. I, it's not, organized religion is like well, that's not how a thing I am. to like, me. Do you believe in the higher force? Um, that surprises me. I thought you did. I thought you... I'm agnostic. Well, I'm agnostic too. Yeah. That's basically like you I'm don't really know. hopeful that yeah. there's something more. Yeah. And I, I, I feel that there's definitely more out there and that's part of why I'm 
I started getting into paranormal investigation because to me that's proof that there's something else. But is it quote unquote God? I don't know. Yeah. Like I don't think anyone's actually figured it out. I, I have a very like you. I have a very hard time with organized religion. Yeah, to I me, don't like that's that. Just based in this fear is a sin. And... This is a sin. This is a sin. Yeah, it's fear based. Uh, I I I believe in a force of good outside yeah. of us. I if you want to call it sure. God, if you want to call it karma, if you want to call it the force from Star Trek, right. from Star Wars, I yeah. don't know. But I believe there is something. Me too, but I don't, I don't think that's religious. I don't so much believe in like this male figure no. god. A long white bearded man sitting on a yeah, throne in a I white believe robe. that there is I believe there's good. I believe there's something but I to me it's more of a force that permeates everything. Mm-hmm. And but I just have a hard time with organized religion. Yeah. I just do. So I, that's why I say I'm not religious yeah. because I don't belong to any religion. I say that I'm, I'm not religious and that I don't go to church, but I'm religious and I believe there is something that created us. I think that's just your spiritual then. Yeah. Religious is very specific. Religious like to you is you going follow to church. A, a, no, not even going to church. It's that you, you fo- follow you f- a very specific list of rules yeah. and theories and like understandable i get and, that and i i would say no not at yeah. all not even remotely but i definitely feel like i have a moral compass and i feel like it's i don't know I, yeah i feel like there's more i feel like yeah. there's too many things that happen in this world that can't be explained by science yeah. and if it's not science then what is it it's got to be something more or something i mean i wouldn't believe in ghosts i wouldn't believe in you know yeah the paranormal I, I don't know if I think whatever my force is that I think, I don't know if I think it created us or it's just there to guide us. Yeah. You know, I've never thought that deeply about it, you know, so I, know. I don't, I don't, I, I think like you would be saying that I'm not religious, but I'm spiritual. Yeah. I think there's something. Definitely. But I just don't really believe. Well, and I don't know what it is. I don't have any answers, but I'm, I'm hopeful and I, I'm kind of searching in my own way. The only the only religion that I believe is good and true is the Buddhism? the cosmic arc that Krista <laughs> talked about. That's the only one that I'm buying right I now. I say Buddhism is really the only I, one Buddhism, that I can I like get Buddhism. Behind. I like yeah. I have friends that are Wiccan and I I really like Wicca. That's interesting I do. too. I think Wicca is a very it's all about the nature. It's nature very nature. And it's got that rule of three that if you harm someone, it's going to come back to you threefold. Yep. I love that. I think yep. that's very you know. I kind of sort of got I'm, into I, that a little bit in my I, younger years. I don't dismiss other people's religious beliefs no i don't either i just just don't don't think anyone has it figured out no no and i don't think that but even even my stuff judging people because they're not following the same rules that you believe in is that's not godlike either i don't know even with my thinking that there's a force of good out there sometimes especially like this year it's hard to yeah it's hard to believe that exists yeah you know, but at the same time, we only hear about the bad stuff going yes. on. There's a lot of really beautiful and amazing yeah. things going on yes. in the world too that we just don't hear about. So yeah, that's that's. So the short as... answer is no. I'm not religious, but I do believe in something. I yeah. just don't. I haven't figured it out yet. Ditto. I'll probably yeah. be searching for the rest of my life, but that's, yeah. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. No, I don't think there. I think sometimes that's what life is: is to find meaning in mm-hmm. your life. I yeah. guess. Yeah. All right. Wow. Okay, good. Easier than I good thought it was going to be. <laughs> it, was, yeah, it was less painful than I thought it was going to be. As soon as I saw it, I was like, oh boy. That's all we need to do is stir up more. Poop. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I think that's it. So the deets. Yeah, I don't think we're forgetting anything. We did the pickle joke. Jack Pickleus. Uh, you can email us. I was going to do Jack Pickleus. <laughs> okay. You can email us at thestrangesessions at gmail.com. I like that. I like that you and I both have access to that. So that yeah. like we're we're alternating when we email somebody back. Sometimes it's me, sometimes it's you. Yeah, if you email, don't assume it's just Kurt. Yeah. Because we both get too. the same yeah. alerts. Yeah. Yep. So if you have any salty pictures for me, don't send them to <laughs> send that. them directly to Kurt. Don't send, yeah, send them directly to me. <laughs> salty pictures. What are salty pictures? <laughs> what is this? Well, it's salty. Me, salty means angry. No, Someone's salty gonna... means doesn't salty mean dirty too? Salty? When I think of salty, I think someone's like mad at you. Yeah. yeah. Maybe I'm thinking saucy. Saucy, yes. Yeah. If you have saucy pictures. You can send us salty pictures. <laughs> <laughs> we get salty emails, that's for sure. Oh, that's funny. So we are on Twitter at Strange Session without the final S. We are on Instagram where Krista does an amazingly good job. Mm-hmm. 
at the Strange Sessions. You can send us postcards, snail mail, and goodies at the Strange Sessions P.O. Box 434. And I need to pay for this or we're going to lose this box in the next week. I just remembered that. (laughs) The Strange Sessions P.O. Box 434, Manitowoc, Wisconsin, 54221-0434, which I will pay for on Monday. Funny. Uh, You can send us a message to our little lonely phone line that's out there in Reedsville that nobody has called lately (laughs) at 920-443-9602. By the way, happy Father's Day, Kurt. Thank you. You have a a fur baby. I am a cat daddy. You have a fur baby. I am a cat daddy. And happy Father's Day to all of the fathers who are listening. Um, I know this will come out a couple days later, but Father's Day is tomorrow, so... Yep, just a fur baby that just I know a fur of. Baby. I don't think there's any others. <laughs> oh, geez, must be nice to be a guy. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think that's it. Yeah, I think so too. It turned thank out better. Thank you for all of our gifts. Yes, thank I mean, you for I'm all of our at stuff. Socks the socks and stickers. The awesome and fried egg chip. And, the stickers. Yeah. I'm excited to try this vinegar. I just so, feel that's very going to be spoiled. next episode. We're going to yeah. try our vinegars. Uh, wow, our pickle cotton candy is like a puck. It is hilarious. It's a, it's now a science experiment. Yeah, it's weird that when Aaron was in here, Aaron had some and it was still full to fluffy? the top and it's not wow. fluffy anymore. It's literally like a misshapen hockey puck. Yeah. Thing. I did take a picture of it last time, but I didn't post it. They've been, pre- the cadets are here yeah. using the school this weekend where they stay They've overnight. They've been pretty quiet, actually. They've been very quiet. We've so heard a couple kind of, bangs, kind of impressed. but... But yeah. this episode turned out better than we thought it would at the start because yeah. both Krista and I were very in a mood and scatterbrained. <laughs> still in a mood. <laughs> so, and I'm still scatterbrained, but we got through it. We got through it. That's all that matters. Yep. It's in the books. Thanks for coming along for the ride, guys. Exactly. <laughs> so from Krista and I in the old school media studio, until next time, stay, stay strange. strange. This has been an Old School Media production, executive produced by Kirk Konechny. For more information and content, please visit strangesessions.com.